So sweaty, by the way. There is so many reviews about the BRZ and FRS that after shooting about four or five hours of footage of me talking about it, I realized that I'm not offering anything new, so I need to find the one thing that only I can offer you as a review of this car. Um, if you're if you came to this video to find out if it's a drift like a good drift car, uh, we can tell you right now it's great. Buy one as a drift car. Uh, these here are the things I really like about the car. However, there's some things that I don't like about the car, and that's kind of more what this video is about. You can find lots of good reviews, and if I were to give them an, an arbitrary score, uh, you know, put a random number to whether or not they're a good drift car, I'd give them a 70 out of 100. So if you're thinking about buying one, just buy one. But the one thing that I can offer that nobody else can is I'm one of the few people who is exceptionally poor. Exceptionally poor. <laughs> who owns one of these. And you might think that's a weird approach or weird aspect, but there is a difference between the 8.6 communities. The AE86 and the GT86 communities don't directly intertwine. And it actually has to do with finance. These are great drift cars and drift it. That's go get one, drift, drift them if you can afford one. The prices on these are dropping as the AE86 is increasing. And so there's going to be a trade-off, there's going to be an exchange through those. And so people like me, pe poor people who enjoy drifting, are eventually going to get into the drifting these cars. And so that's kind of what this video is about. Let's take you to the laboratory. And if you're wondering, uh, do I have a garage space to use? I don't have a garage space to use. This actually isn't mine. This driveway is uh, not really my space to work on cars. Although we have in the past, I have to be extremely careful as we're renters here. I can't, I can't make big spills or messes. And so... Really, the only storage I have is some of my tools underneath the shelf there. And then I'll take you to kind of my space in the room here. So, yeah, we'll take you just kind of down into the laboratory. Here's Robert. He's watching some, some videos. Um, but, yeah, as you can tell, <laughs> I'm pretty poor. This is, this is it. This is, this is where everything happens. Please ignore the plastic. We're just doing some cleaning and stuff. So, um Let's, uh, let's sit down and let's have a chat about the FRS and VRZ. Uh, hi there again. <laughs> you know, it's not a brag. Um, uh, really, it's the opposite. Being poor isn't great, but drifting is for everybody. It's not just for the rich YouTubers and, and all those people who have lots of money to go to the dealership and either get a car or lease or buy it outright. I got really lucky. I got given this car for free. It had a blown motor and we put a new motor in it. And so I have this sort of um, ahead of the curve advantage where these cars are gonna drop in price and more people are going to find them attainable to get into drifting. So let's build a plan and let's work together to create the best feeling FRS and BRZ for the lowest cost. The name of this is Project Archetype. It's the archetype of a good drift car, if that makes sense, for cheap. That last 30% that's missing is what we really want to focus on in this video. We already know this is a good drift car, so let's figure out what parts need improvement. We recently went on a, uh, well, a scouting mission. We put the car back to 100% stock, and then we did a track day, and I did a lot of laps in the car, and you can kind of see it here. I had a lot of fun driving on our track day. The car was bone stock and it really gave me a chance to kind of feel out what I like and dislike about the car. Um, the one thing I can sort of sum the whole experience up with is there are different types of drifting. The FRS slash BRZ is definitely from an engineer's perspective of what drifting is. But let Professor Quinn tell you about the different types of drifting. Ah. 
It's me, Egghead Quinn. Uh, as you can tell, it's very egg-shaped. And so let's talk about the nerdy points of drifting. There are two main types of drifting. There is acceleration type drifting where you're using the gas pedal to do the drifting. And there's also deceleration type drifting where you are not using the gas pedal to do the drift. And so everybody can tell me about only one type of each. And usually they'll tell me the clutch kick where you give the, the clutchy boy a, a big old kick and it's a big surprise, a surprise, a sudden power. And then uh, we have the decel, which is often the hand brake. Awesome. Those big hydro hand brakes are a type of drifting that's a decel type of drifting, but there is more types of drifting than that. We have your ever so famous Scandinavian flicky boy, flick, which is a type of weight transfer that actually happens before the corner. But sometimes, sometimes you can mix in that Scandinavian flick with a touch of the brake and that turns it into a uh, decel type drifting. Additionally, we have the uh, power over, which is using uh, weight transfer, but not before the corner, it will be during the corner. It's not truly a type of drift, but it is a type of oversteer. Uh, there is uh, the shift lock, which is by shifting down to a lower gear and not rev matching on purpose or properly, you'll actually cause the back of the car to uh, get loose and get slidey. And last but not least, we have the lift oversteer, uh, which is also a type of decel. So there is multiple types of acceleration and deceleration type drifts. Bop. With that acceleration and deceleration type drifts, um, the, the FRS and BRZ was really good on throttle. And if I ever had a deceleration type drift, I often lost sort of communication with the car. Uh, and that's where I had a lot of problems. I'm not somebody who uses a lot of handbrake for drifting. I, other people are, and for me, that's I don't. That's the style I don't like to do. And so the car got really confused and often uh, didn't kind of do what I wanted it to under those deceleration points. Or sometimes I like to modulate my acceleration type drifts. I'm not all the way to the floor. I'm sometimes just pedaling the car gently. And often there was some miscommunication to how I can control the rear wheel speed uh, on and off the throttle. If I were to sum that up, it was controlling the rear wheel speed was the most difficult part. So let's find out, um, you know, ordering this from, from our least important, the thing that doesn't need to, that still needs to change, but doesn't need to change the most. And we'll go down to the thing I think needs the biggest change. The brake bias on the car. Steering at the brake pedal is actually something that you can do in drifting. When the car is sliding, you can actually like adjust the pitch and you can you can change the angle of the car by moving weight onto the front wheels using the brake pedal. And often I found that the brake bias was very like aggressive towards the front of the car. Even though the rotor sizes front and rear are uh, actually quite similar, the, the actual pressure bias was a little bit off. That is, I would call, if I were to sum it all up, I would call that a 1% problem. It's very minor, but it's something I noticed. The next thing I kind of noticed was our, our caster effect in the car wasn't very fast. I'm a kind of person who really likes to whip the wheel and throw it really quick. And I've owned a million AA6s at this point. I've had 28 Corollas and actually 13 AA6s. So I've drifted Corollas a lot. And I really do like that throw the wheel feel. And I found sometimes our steering just didn't have that quick caster. Uh, it could be that we don't have, you know, a lot of offset on our wheels. Uh, jacking is real where the car lifts based on the caster, camber, and the uh, scrub radius of the car. Those are those are real things. Adding maybe potentially a little bit more caster to the car and adding a little bit more camber to the front of the car and possibly track width actually might be helpful. But at this point, I would only call that really a 2% problem. It's really not that big of a problem. It's something I can, I, I even on our first track day, was able to work through. I've seen a lot of people drifting these cars and I often see people who buy them and expect them to be drift cars. And I'll tell you right now, if you expect them to be drift cars just by pressing the track but track mode button, they're not gonna do it. New cars are not allowed to be sold with the trash control fully able to be like turned off. 
uh, National ha Highway Traffic Safety Association, NHTSA, and other like the European equivalent, they just don't actually allow you to anymore. Uh, you can't sell a car that way. So Toyota put in a secret code and it's called the pedal dance and it's supposed to turn everything off. And yeah, it registers in your ECU that maybe you're doing something a little bit aggressive with the car and maybe it'll void your warranty. So if you still are on warranty, ignore the rest of this video. <laughs> but pedal dance, it, I'm told, was supposed to take everything off. But I found sometimes we're still sort of stepping in i have a guess to this in you know your regular driving mode it allows one or two it kind of allows one or two degrees of slip very little very minor and then it's going to step in in your track mode or your circuit mode it might actually allow like maybe five percent or ten percent slip um but I think secretly in the pedal dance mode, it's still not fully off. A couple times uh, I did some some backwards entries just for fun, and I would go to get back on the throttle, and the car would argue with me. It would say, "No, no problem. Um, we're sorting out the angle issue here, and we don't trust your inputs." And so I think the the pedal dance is actually still slightly like it's still slightly on but it's allowing me like 45 percent or 50 percent slip angles like um it's it's really a great like it's allowing me a lot of freedom but not complete freedom and so i feel like maybe that's uh maybe a, a three or a four percent problem if that makes sense like it's it's not a huge problem and for the most part unless i was doing something really really wild would i even notice it stepping in so that's also something that's really easy to fix we'll talk about that later while we're on the topic of the ECU, we might as well talk about the drive-by-wire. In a lot of the older Corollas, when you press the th throttle, the throttle plate moves at exactly the same rate. Drifting is about controlling that rear wheel speed, and so sometimes you do need that that like directness even to micro-adjust it. As you skip more seat time, you can you start to pay attention to the sound and the feeling of rear wheel speed, and you can make a guess to how fast the wheels are going relative to the road and how that's going to change the pitch and angle of your car. Sometimes with the drive-by-wire, I found we were out of sync. I would want to micro-adjust the throttle, and it's just designed for me to be fully on the throttle all the time. There's no playing or fiddling around. That's where I think that engineering standpoint comes in, where the car is designed to drift from an engineer's interpretation, not from a drifter's interpretation. And so they got really close, but there's still space to go. In previous videos, I had made fun of the torque dip. People are complaining about the torque dip. And I really had, I'd spent some time like drifting the cars before, but never on my own car. So I was always doing what I would consider really safe drifts. Um, I wasn't doing like pretty stylish stuff. And so even with a lot of seat time, I didn't really notice the torque dip that aggressively. But when I started getting really wild and aggressive with my own car for the first time, I could definitely feel the torque dip. Torque, 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 torque dip is kind of a problem. I, I... I feel like um, I actually need to solve that at, at, at some point. I would only really give that a 4% problem though. I don't really think it's a major problem. And what I can do is I can adjust the tires a little bit to make up for that. I want to talk about the thing that was the biggest problem. We mentioned before that it feels like this car is designed from an engineer's interpretation of drifting and that they got it pretty good. But the problem is that they didn't really consider the diversity of types of drifts. Uh, Professor Quinn, when ah, it's me. he showed up and talked to you about uh, acceleration and deceleration type drifts, this car is really only designed for a clutch kick entry uh, or handbrake entry and then just stay on throttle that's it there's no subtlety in modulation it's really just how can i maintain a really long slide if i were to sum the whole thing up the car feels like it's designed to maintain a really long slide it's not really specifically designed for clean transitions or accurate drifts to put it in very small small areas and good drivers will be able to do those things don't get me wrong that they'll be able to work through those things but we can make it easier on ourselves so that the, the car and the driver communicate a lot better the thing that i found most troublesome on the car was the differential the brz 
FRS use a torsion style differential, which is a torque sensing diff. And if you're not sure what that means, we're talking about limited slip differentials. Limited slip differentials are when both rear wheels spin at the same time. We want both back wheels spinning and pushing the car through the drift. The problem is that uh, torsions off throttle actually unlock. Sometimes at partial throttle, they'll unlock as well, making it a really inconsistent drift. The biggest part of drifting precision and control is the control of that rear wheel speed. And so we can only control the rear wheel speed uh, with an acceleration type drift with our foot matted to the floor. We have to make sure that the differential is, is always loaded up so it stays locked. And the only deceleration type drift that we can do is a handbrake pull, which is totally okay, but maybe not like, like good for every driver style. And so this is our biggest problem at, at 80 to 85% of the problem. I'm terrible at math, but somewhere in there, that's the thing that I feel is the biggest problem. So if you're looking for my review of the, of the car, if I were to sum up everything about this, the FRS and BRZ are a great drift platform that is going to get cheaper, but we kind of need to bridge that, that AA6 group into that GT86 group by making things m more affordable and uh, more raw. We want to make the car a little bit more raw than it is. And so in future videos, Project Archetype uh, will take us through that. Actually, so much so, we have our first... We're going to start with locking the differential. And if you're wondering why we're not talking about welding, we'll talk about that in a future video. So thanks for hanging out with me. That's my review. That's how I feel about the car. It drifts great. It could drift better. And hopefully we can teamwork and find some really good solutions to make the car drift even better for cheap. Um, if you've been hanging out, thank you very much. And uh, we'll talk to you later. A big shout out to all of my Patreons and my sponsors. Thank you guys very much. And uh, we'll see you at the next track day. Bye. Hi. <laughs> okay, well, you've been waiting for a review video, and uh, it's good to see you. Um, <laughs> this is silly. Let's try this again. Although it is good to see you. Um, before we get into the depths of my feelings and things, let's try not to get fucking shit in my eyes. Ah! So let's talk. <laughs> I don't know why I'm having such a hard time today. This is great. Um, I would call a 1% problem uh, was our brake ba balance or brake, yeah, our brake balance, bias, ba 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 balance, balance, bias, bias, balance, our brake bias. The GT86, the, the ZC6, Z, Z, N, Z, 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 N6? Z, N6? <laughs> I'm currently uh, watching myself. It's me, Egghead Quinn. Uh, oh my god. Tell, it's very watching myself so let's do talk some about editing. The nerdy points of drifting. There are two it's really, I'm trying to be nerdy. I'm not good at there it. There is acceleration type drifting where you're using the Or maybe I'm really good at it.